let's suppose we have a matrix or a collection of vectors denoted as A. There are three vectors inside the matrix, and the vectors inside the matrix are 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, and negative 1, 1, and 0. Matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now let's determine if each vector in the matrix is linearly independent and capable of spanning three-dimensional space. We'll label each vector A, B, and C respectively. To begin, we'll examine vectors A and B for linear independence. We employ the form alpha A plus beta B. The resulting linear combination of vectors A and B will yield alpha to alpha and beta. Is there any combination of alpha and beta that results in zero? Yes, but only when both alpha and beta are zero. However, if vectors A and B were linearly dependent, there would be another combination of alpha and beta besides zero and zero that would yield zero. So we've established that vectors A and B are linearly independent. Now, what about vectors A and C? When we combine vectors a and c, we get alpha minus beta, 2 alpha plus beta, and 0. Is there a way to make this combination equal to 0? Well, setting alpha minus beta and 2 alpha plus beta equal to 0 gives us 3 alpha equals 0 when we add the equations together. This means that both alpha and beta must be 0. Consequently, 0 and 0 is the only combination of alpha and beta that results in a linear combination of 0, confirming the linear independence of vectors A and C. Similarly, vectors B and C also prove to be linearly independent. Hence, every pair of vectors in the matrix is linearly independent, resulting in the matrix achieving a full rank of 3. Let's consider a new matrix A consisting of three vectors. Let's denote the first two vectors as A and B. When we combine alpha times vector A with beta times vector B, we obtain alpha minus beta, 2 alpha minus 2 beta, and 0. Can we get 0 for each value? Yes, when both alpha and beta take on the same value, whether it's 3, 4, or any other value, the resulting combination equals 0. Put simply, whether alpha equals beta, the resultant value will be 0. Consequently, vectors A and B are linearly dependent, and the rank of the matrix decreases by 1, making it 2. When the rank of a matrix decreases, it implies the existence of a vector that when multiplied with the matrix, yields a result of 0. In simpler terms, there's a vector that when multiplied with matrix A, produces a result of zero. But before delving deeper into this vector, we need to know how matrix and vector multiplication operates. So let's take a look at the basics of matrix and vector multiplication. Suppose we have a vector in our N, which is essentially an n by 1 matrix. We'll introduce a new n by n matrix denoted by A, and then multiply matrix A by vector x. Can you guess the dimensions of the resulting matrix? The outcome of multiplying the matrix by the vector x will be another n by 1 matrix, which is also a vector. When we multiply two matrices, A and B, where A is an A by B matrix and B is a B by C matrix, the resulting matrix C will be an A by C matrix. So the B's between A and C will vanish. Remember, we can only multiply two matrices when the inner dimensions match, meaning B and C are equal. 
since the inner dimensions of matrix A and vector X are both n, the resulting matrix is an n by 1 matrix. So, when the inner dimensions are the same, multiplying a matrix by a vector yields a vector. Now, let's delve deeper into how this operation functions and what implications the result holds. Let's explore matrix and vector multiplication within a two-dimensional plane. Consider the equation AX equals zero. Let matrix A be defined by the vectors 1, 2, and 2, 4. We'll denote each vector as A and B. Let's plot vector A and vector B on a two-dimensional plane. This vector is vector A, and this will be vector B. When we plot these vectors on the same plane, we observe that we can obtain vector B by scaling vector A by 2. Therefore, one method to obtain 0 from the two vectors is to scale vector A by 2 and then subtract vector B. Consequently, we can satisfy the equation by multiplying vector negative 2 and 1 making the right-hand side of the equation 0. In other words, when alpha times vector A plus beta times vector B equals 0, we can substitute negative 2 for alpha and 1 for beta. Let's plot the new vector negative 2 and 1 on the plane and denote it as x. Vector A and vector B span a straight line rather than the entire plane. Now, let's consider another straight line perpendicular to this line. Since the coordinates of vector A are 1 and 2, this line will pass through the coordinates negative 2 and 1, which correspond to the vector x. Thus, vectors A and B can only span a straight line instead of the entire plane, while our new vector x allows them to span the entire plane. Once more, Vectors A and B only cover a line leaving points on the plane unobtainable. However, vector X enables them to span the entire plane. The original straight line spanned by the vectors A and B is referred to as the range space, while the remaining space on the plane that was not covered by the range space is called the null space. In summary, within our two-dimensional space, there's a region we can reach by linearly combining the original two vectors. We'll refer to this uncovered area as the null space. When combined, the null space and the range space account for the entire plane. Let's revisit matrix A with values 1, 2, and 2, 4. The rank of the matrix is 1. Now let's include vector x with values negative 2 and 1 into the matrix, which is perpendicular to vector a. As a result, matrix a becomes a 2 by 3 matrix, and its rank increases to 2. In other words, the three vectors within the matrix can span the entire plane, since vectors 1, 2, and 2, 4 are linearly dependent, removing one of them from the matrix still allows vectors within the matrix to span the entire plane. Therefore, the remaining two vectors 1, 2, and negative 2, 1 serve as the basis vectors for a two-dimensional space, capable of spanning the entire plane. Remember, if there is a non-zero vector x that satisfies ax equals zero, the space defined by the vector x is known as the null space. Additionally, the presence of linear dependent vectors in the matrix leads to a reduction in the matrix rank. Therefore, we can view a matrix as a linear operator. In a matrix vector multiplication of the form ax equals b, where a is a matrix and x and b are vectors, matrix A acts as a linear operator that transforms vector x into vector b. Again, matrix A transforms vector x into vector b. 
Imagine there is an unknown box that takes vector A as an input and produces vector B as an output. Inside this box, matrix A is multiplied by vector A. Thus, the matrix itself functions as a linear operator. Now, let's delve into the concept of a linear operator and its operation on a two-dimensional plane. For instance, consider a matrix composed of vectors A and B, where A is 1, 2, and B is 2, 1. The rank of the matrix is 2, and it's a full rank matrix. Let's multiply this matrix by a vector x1, y1. Because we are scaling vector a by x1 and vector b by y1, the outcome of the matrix vector multiplication is x1 plus 2y1, 2x1 plus y1. If the vector x1, y1 is 1, 1, the outcome of the equation is the vector 3, 3. In simpler terms, when the initial vector 1, 1 is the input of the matrix vector multiplication, it yields a new vector 3, 3 as output. What does it signify that the original vector 1, 1 has shifted to its new coordinates 3, 3. Let's examine this more closely. On our two-dimensional plane, this vector is positioned at coordinates 3, 3. In other words, the point's coordinates are 3, 3 on the two-dimensional plane where the axes are labeled as the x-axis and y-axis. Now, Let's imagine that instead of the original x-axis and y-axis, the same plane is depicted using vector A and vector B as its new axes. Once more, we are visualizing the plane from a perspective that utilizes vector A and vector B as the new axes. To reach the point on the plane, we start by moving along vector A, and from the end point of vector A, we continue by moving along vector B. Therefore, the coordinates of the point are 3, 3 on the plane when using the original x-axis and y-axis. However, when using vector A and vector B as axes, the new coordinates of the point become 1, 1. Let me elaborate on the significance of shifting from coordinates 3, 3 to 1, 1. Consider if the two-dimensional space initially use vector A and vector B. In this scenario, the coordinates of points would be 1, 1. The change in the coordinates imply that when using the x-axis and y-axis, the coordinates are interpreted as 3, 3. Therefore, multiplying a matrix by a vector signifies adjusting or rotating the original axis toward the vectors in the matrix. Let's consider a matrix A with values 1, 2, and 2, 1. We'll draw lines passing through the coordinates in the matrix and the origin, which will serve as the new axis of the plane. Denoting each vector in the matrix as A and B, we will refer to the corresponding lines as A and B, respectively. On line A, we can designate 1, and similarly, on line B, we can mark 1 as well. These ones correspond to the vectors in the matrix. We can also label 2 and negative 1 on both lines A and B. With this setup, the coordinate space has been transformed, allowing us to determine the new coordinates of points in the plane.
Matrix A has twisted the coordinate space, and we are able to identify new units or ones within this modified coordinate system. Within this new coordinate space, we can locate a point at coordinates 1, 1, which is positioned here. Conversely, the coordinates of the same points become 3, 3 when viewed on the plane using the original axis, namely the x-axis and y-axis. This illustrates one aspect of corresponding matrix vector multiplication. In matrix vector multiplication, a vector multiplied by a matrix represents the altered coordinates of a point within a transformed coordinate system, whereas the resulting output vector signifies the coordinates of the same points within the original coordinate space.